Congratulations on the purchase of your new XT16HR family and welcome to the MDC family. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set it up from start to finish ready for camping. When setting up our caravan, the first thing we look for is a good level spot to set it up. Then we put our jockey wheel down. Most important thing, when you put your jockey wheel down, make sure the handle locks into place, that you can see that the pins of the handle come all the way through and it can't accidentally collapse. Never put any part of your body underneath the chassis of the front of the caravan. Secondly, apply the handbrake. Make sure it's on firmly and always use wheel chocks. Chock your caravan front and back of the wheels so it can't move anywhere. With our handbrake on, our jockey wheel down, we level the camper or the caravan and it sits nice and flat. Then we can go around and start putting the stabiliser legs down. To set up the stabiliser legs, you'll need this. It's the brace that comes with your caravan to adjust the stabiliser legs down. It's simple to do. Grab the blue handle, take a bit of weight of the leg and move it into position. Once it's down, Wiggle it so the blue handle locks into place. It might be a bit stiff, but that's normal. Put the brace on the hex drive and wind the leg down. Don't forget to do the other three around the caravan. Before we jump inside to turn the power on, we need to put the step down. Reach in, push down the bar at the back of the step, pull it forward and give it a nudge down and it's locked into place. Our gas is connected, now we can set up the Truma hot water system. Open up this dust cover here, then we need to remove the factory Truma cover. Peel that off, now we're ready to start the hot water system inside. Setting up the kitchen is super easy. You will need this, however, which is the support leg that goes underneath the kitchen. Simply open up your hatch door and lift this pad bolt here. This is the main securing mechanism for the kitchen during travel. What we do is we lift it up, turn it 90 degrees, and it will sit on top of these two pins here so it's up out of the way. Then grab this handle, and press down on this blue tab on the slide mechanism. Pull it out into place. Now we can put our support leg underneath the kitchen, just here. There's a receiver hole in there. Adjust the leg down. Now what I like to do is lift the kitchen a little bit prior to lock, locking in the leg. Now that's doing its job properly supporting this for when you put your pots and pans on. Each side of this fold out tray, there's a little rubber bungee loop. Undo that both sides and we can fold our tray out. Now we have a wind deflector here, which when nudged down locks into place. Remember, if you want to lower this, you need to lift it up out of its grooves and then you can lay it down. Simple as that, you can open up the lid to your stove. Now, all we need to do is connect up the water and gas. There's four hoses for the kitchen. One is this drain hose, which attaches to the spigot on the drain in the sink. So you can pop that out through the hole in the bottom of the sink and attach it to the spigot. That way your waste water from the sink here will run away, run it into a bucket. The other hoses are the gas and the hot and cold water. The gas fitting is a bayonet type, so it pushes in, you turn it to the right, and it'll lock into position. To do that, first remove the dust cover, then we can put our gas fitting in. Line it up, push it in, and turn it to the right. Now to connect the hot and the cold water, remove the dust caps, hot water goes into the fitting on the left, and cold water to the fitting on the right. Setting up the awning on your XT16 is very, very easy. The switch is located just inside the door. Make sure your 12 volt power is switched on at the main switch 
and it's ready to go. Just to the right hand side, switch the switch to the out position and the awning will extend itself. Now it's always good to stay close and as the awning comes into reach, just grab it with a couple of fingers if there's windy conditions to make sure the wind doesn't try and take control of it. Now both sides, there is a leg and the leg is on a hinge that needs to be pulled out before you turn the leg down into position. So it's always important to reach up, pull that little sliding hinge out, then release the leg from its captive position in the middle, bring it down, undo the cam lock, and adjust it to the height you want. Put that a little bit forward. Bring my other one out and unlock it. But what I want to do today is actually set it up in its positions on the side of the caravan, which means we undo the cam lock, bring the leg out and place it in the little white receiver on the side of the caravan. There's a little locking cap on top, press that down and that locks the leg in position on the side of the van. Lock up our cam lock. So now we can put our other one in, undo the cam lock on the adjuster, bring the leg up into position. So we pop the base of the leg in there. We lift the little white cap up there, press it down on top and that's locked in position. Now we just adjust our awning leg to get the awning at the right height lock our cam lock in. Now, the awning is self-supported and well looked after, it's secure. Now, if you wanna leave the awning legs down on the ground, you need to peg them down and your kit will come with a couple of pegs specifically designed for that. When you set up in your van, if your van's got one of these covers on the bottom of the door, you need to remove it. These vents at the bottom of the door are here for a couple of reasons. One, they'll vent fresh air, which will stop condensation or go a long way to reducing condensation when you're in the van sleeping. Also, when there's gas appliances fitted inside the van, you need a ventilation at the lowest point, which is here at the bottom of the door. So remember, remove the travel dust cover once you're set up, and before you hit the dirt, save you getting dust in your van, return it into its position when all the gas appliances are switched off and isolated. All the controls for the 12 volt electrical are right here in this cabinet, which includes the main isolator switch, the controller for the projector charger, and also your water tank level gauges. All the switches are here, including your readouts. To activate the diesel heater, you need to select the heater switch here before activating it at the control panel. For the Truma hot water system, you need to engage two switches. One is the water pump water gauge switch and also the hot water switch here before you try and activate the Truma hot water system. For DC outlets, our control switch is here and a master switch here for the toilet function and the refrigerator. Above, we have the reset breakers. So should any of these not work, these breakers here are your first point of call and just simply press them in to reset. To turn the whole system off, you use this isolator switch right here. There you go, folks. That's how simple and easy it is to set up your XT16 HR family.